Hello, my name is Benjamin Hart. I'm an American attorney and the managing director of Integrity Legal here in Bangkok, Thailand. As the title of this video suggests, we're going to be generally discussing Thai immigration policy. The reason I wanted to do this is there are multiple videos on this channel where I discuss how um, basically since 2014, 2015, the immigration apparatus has become increasingly strict with respect to application and enforcement of Thai immigration rules, regulations, and laws, and has also at the same time in certain ways created new visa categories which are sort of, for lack of a better term, easier to deal with. Um, but I would actually argue maybe easy isn't the right word, they're just a bit more straightforward. So just to sort of set the frame for this video, excuse me, there's a recent uh, article, it was published in asia.nikkei.com, title is Thai government snipping red tape from foreign business visas. And the, the title is a little bit misleading to this, as you'll see shortly. It actually kind of more discusses how um, currently the system is, is rather difficult to deal with. Uh, byline Bangkok, quoting directly, foreign chambers of commerce in Bangkok are feeling the pain of Apple, the U.S. tech company, as it gropes through Thailand's arcane bureaucracy in an effort to open its first flagship store in the capital. Quoting further, Apple's fate is a test for the military government, which last month promulgated the National Competitive Enhancement Act for targeted industries. It wants to attract foreign investment in 10 existing and emerging high-tech industries that involve significant research and development. These include biotechnology, robotics, digital and smart devices, and logistics. We've discussed this more at length in other videos, specifically ones pertaining to the Eastern Economic Corridor, as well as the video discussing Thailand 4.0 initiative. Quoting further, the new carrots on offer include a limited number of quote-unquote smart visas for foreign experts needed for the Thailand 4.0 initiative. Quoting further, the process for foreign work visas and for foreign businesses to operate needs to be simplified, said Kolbsak Putrakun, a minister attached to the Prime Minister's office at a seminar for foreign and Thai businessmen in April. He said the issue would be raised in May with the 11 government agencies involved in approving foreign work visas. Finally, quoting further, there nonetheless remain significant obstacles to hiring foreign workers. Thai-owned companies and Thai foreign joint ventures do, uh, that do not have Board of Investment privileges must have two million baht, over $60,000 in paid up capital for every foreign hire, and there need to be at least four local hires alongside. Apart from U.S. citizens with treaty privileges, foreigners may also not own more than 49% of a company in Thailand. So let's unpack some of that. We discussed uh, at length in many different videos on this channel, BOI companies, so-called Board of Investment Promoted Companies. They can receive certain special benefits in the kingdom, things like foreign business licenses, uh, special dispensations with respect to the number of work permits they can have, et cetera, et cetera. Moreover, it also goes into discussing treaty privileges. Um, there they're talking about what's called the US-Thai Treaty of Amity and Economic Cooperation. That treaty um, provides American citizens with the ability to own their companies uh, nearly outright here in the kingdom, um, notwithstanding the fact that all Thai companies must have uh, three Thai shareholders. An American citizen can own um, virtually all the shares of the company, uh, notwithstanding the provisions of the so-called Foreign Business Act. So these are substantially uh, beneficial things. But for those who can't use those, uh, those who can't avail themselves of those, uh, the Foreign Business Act requires that certain businesses only provide 49%, only be allowed to have a, major, a minority stake be allotted to foreign nationals. Uh, moreover, work permits, you have to have, as they noted there, 2 million baht in registered capital for each work permit and visa associated with the company. Um, in the past, the uh, this has been a rather, I won't say arcane, but it's not the most straightforward system for maintaining uh, visa status. And in fact, it's my opinion that in recent years, uh, the immigration apparatus has tightened up on their protocols and actually made the process a bit more difficult. That being said, the immigration authorities have created things like the Smart Visa Initiative. Um, they've instituted uh, BOI protocols within that initiative, the Thailand 4.0 Initiative, and the Eastern Economic Corridor. In total, what does this mean? Well, what I think it means is, look, uh, large foreign direct investors here in the kingdom um, are going to see substantial benefits and will probably see ease of processing 
with respect to certain Thai visa and Thai work permit regulations. Uh, however, those that do not seek protection under things like the Board of Investment Scheme or the Treaty of Amity are going to have a rather difficult time of it as I think that the system is going to get ever tighter. I think that the enforcement mechanisms here are going to become more stringent as time goes on. Um, and I simply think that making the assumption that Thailand's immigration apparatus is going to look like it did five years ago, 15 years in the future, is foolhardy. Um, I actually think Thailand's immigration apparatus is going to start looking more and more like, say, Japan, Hong Kong, or uh, South Korea. It may even start looking more and more like its Western counterparts. Um, you know, quite honestly, there are there is something of an influx of foreign labor trying to get into Thailand, and the Thai immigration system, I think, is taking it upon themselves to go ahead and, at the very least, vet those new entrants, those new arrivals, uh, in some cases, turn them away. Uh, as noted in another video on this channel, uh, we discuss how it's increasingly common to see immigration officials simply deny applications for extensions uh, based on documentation deficiencies and tell people to leave the country and reapply for a new visa and come back in, seek another extension. Uh, that was not unheard of in the past, but it was not particularly common in the past. More and more we see it happening with a frequency bordering on commonality at the time of this video. I think that's going, I think that that trend is set. I think that the die is cast and we are going to be seeing that be more the case in the future. So the thing to take away from this video is I think immigration policy is becoming a little bit more relaxed with respect to large foreign direct investors here in the kingdom. But I think with respect to small entities, especially ones that can't avail themselves of the protections under the BOI or the treaty, uh, it's safe to say that things are going to get maybe not more difficult, uh, but certainly more complex moving forward.